Neither of my parents were terribly devout, but my dad was comfortable talking to me about religion and about God. And he liked to go to Temple Israel, mainly as a social thing. He was an usher. And he also liked the music, and he liked Rabbi Shapiro. That was the rabbi he knew. He liked Rabbi Shapiro's sermons, which were about how Jews uh, not only have to be just, but to do justice. And that informs a lot of what I'm trying to do in the Senate. And my dad, I remember we talked about him, my dad didn't see God as some old guy sitting in heaven with a white beard. He thought of God as something behind everything. He said nature and the earth and everything is so beautiful that there must be something behind it all. And that was it. That was his definition of God. And it wasn't any simpler, more complicated than that, and it wasn't any simpler than that. That was it. And that sort of is what I believe, too. But he, the rest of what he got out of it was the religious teachings of any religions, Judaism and any other Western or Eastern that he had absorbed. And it wasn't very different from uh, our founding fathers, uh, not Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but um, uh, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, John Adams, who weren't really Christians. They were deists. And, um, well, that's, <laughs> you don't have to applaud that. I mean, that's what, let's applaud facts and history. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> And John Adams and Thomas Jefferson had this sort of famous correspondence toward the end of their lives. And in it, Jefferson asked Adams for his credo. And uh, Ad or his, his personal creed. And, and Adams wrote uh, that, I guess, it's be just and good. And Jefferson replied, the result of our 50 or 60 years of religious reading in the four years, four words, be just and good, is that in which all inquiries must end. So if your definition of traditional American religious values starts with the founders, you could say that my Jewish father's values were as traditional as they get. Jefferson, of course, we believe had sex with a slave, and my dad would have disapproved of that, uh, may, mainly on the slavery grounds. Now, I consider myself a, a very fortunate person, you know, mainly because I've just been lucky. And I've been lucky in my family life. I had great parents, great brother. I've been uh, married for 35 years, many of them happy. <laughs> um, a lot of people say, how have you remain married for 35 years. I, I cite uh, mainly fear, fear of, uh, fear of being alone. And there's my wife's <laughs> willingness to tolerate me. And we're a family. And I'm not a big one for prayer, but unless you count counting your blessings as prayer, and that's something I do every day. I'm incredibly grateful for my my kids, and I'm going to ask you to indulge me in a bit of fatherly pride here. Uh, both my kids are smart and happy and kind and funny. Uh, my daughter is uh, works in the D.C. public school system. She uh, runs the after-school programs at an elementary school, and um, her program 
Her program has been so successful that Secretary Dun Duncan, the Education Secretary, totally separate from, without knowing any connection to me, went and visited it. And um, I brag on her a lot. And I used to do the radio, when I did my radio show, I brag on her being a public school teacher when she was a teacher. And she would get really mad at me, and, uh, which made me even more proud. Um, <laughs> of how modest she is, and, and she certainly didn't get that from me. Um, my, my, uh, my son is named Joe after my dad. And here's just another point of pride to tell you a little bit about him. In my son's high school, they, had, they didn't have any, any academic awards, they didn't have any sports awards. They had one award, and it was for essentially the mensch of the year of the, of the school, he, and it was named after, like so many of these awards are, after a particularly beloved kid who died in a car accident, the Billy Farrell Award, and of course I'm telling you this because Joe got the Billy Farrell Award. And I remember when he was eight years old, and I picked him up from a play date. And I remember picking him up, and, she, and, and the, the mother said to me, he's such a good kid. He's such a nice kid. And she just said to him, Joe, how come you're so nice? And he said, I think it has something to do with my grandpa. And uh, to me, that's where God is. You know, I don't think dad's up in heaven looking down and smiling at that like he smiled at my laughing at his joke. I'm almost certain that he's not doing that right now. But I think God is my dad's in me. And he's in my son. And do just, be just, be just and good is what I try to do every day in my work. Whether it be on immigration, whether it be on GLBT rights, In everything that I do, I, I remember that. So I want to thank you for being um, the kind of church that embraces all different kinds of beliefs and for being a church that believes in social justice. Um, you're my favorite kind of church. <laughs> um, thank you.